Hey everybody, Mark O'Connell from 8-4 here at Konami headquarters in Tokyo, Japan, home of Kojima Productions. Now, when you think of Kojima Productions, of course you think of great games like the Metal Gear Solid franchise, but especially this time of year, you also think of E3. You think of big E3 announcements, big E3 trailers, big E3 surprises. It's basically a Koji Pro tradition. Which is exactly why, when we found out that the man himself, Hideo Kojima, would not be coming to this year's E3 show in LA, we had to find out why. Thankfully, miraculously, he actually agreed to meet with us and talk about it. It's him. Hey, see ya. All right, my man. Damn. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> All right, Kojima, cut the crap. What's up with E3? Why aren't you going? Okay, let's talk about it somewhere else. Okay. Gaudi. Yes, Hideo. Kojima Productions, 0824. Understood. Gaudi, open up. Understood. Hideo, oxygen, partial pressure, elevation, commencing now. Unknown human presence detected. Hey Mark, we need your full name that way. Oh, okay. Uh, Marcus Aurelius Foxworthy Goldblum Jesus McClure McDonald the third. Marcus Aurelius Foxworthy Goldblum Jesus McLaren McDonald the third. Confirmed. Releasing security enforcement. Partial pressure adjustment complete. Doors opening. Welcome, Mark McDonald. All right, let's go in. Mark, this is our top secret research floor. It's pumped with concentrated oxygen 24 hours a day. And no windows at all, even though we're on what, the 40th floor, 50th floor? No, 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 we're not above ground. We're 100 floors below ground. Confirming carbon dioxide increase, adjusting room temperature. All right, Mark, this way, this way. Okay, so what's this new gaming lifestyle that you mentioned earlier all about? Well, first of all, I think you should take a look at this video. Gaudi, play the trailer. Adjusting lights to viewing mode. Hideo, shall I prepare some popcorn? No thanks, just the trailer here. Who are you guys? Here. Does this help? Oh. We're from a rival game company. We heard Kojima Productions was working on something big for this year's E3. And we want to know what that is. Oh, oh, I'm just a janitor. You have to know something. What's it going to be? Metal Gear Solid 5? Zone of the Enders 3? We're going to make you crack. Yeah. Is it going to be Snatcher 2 for Connect? Bog Tie 4 for the sake what is it? No, I, I, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm just, a, just a janitor. Ah, tough guy. We're gonna have to bring in Psycho Turkey. Psycho Turkey? Let's see what 
It's another pretty little head of yours. <laughs> yes, he's reading his mind. How does that work? Nano machines. <laughs> I'm getting something. <laughs> Far ring. What? The past. Taking the console experience outside. A sadness. Excuse me, please. Trying to game here? Sorry, I'm in the middle of a game right now. I'm trying to get away from the shotgun hog, and I can't because there's too much glare. I know I'm out of ammo. Continuing your progress on the gun. Oh, this is really inconvenient. You have to take that out, please. Well, I think I'm almost beat it. You guys are gonna What's going on? The path, right? Man, I wish I knew a more convenient way to play video games outside. The way things were. Until now. Transfer ring. What? Transfer ring? Kojima's brilliant new plan to unite console and portable gaming at last. Bring your save from the PS3 system to your PSP and continue your progress on the go. Seamless. And the first game Transfer Ring is compatible with is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker for the PS3. Return to Mother Base. Going on a trip? Hit Transfer Ring out and continue your game on the go. Coming back home, select Transfer Ring In to bring your game back into the PS3 and play on your big screen. Wow, now I can play anywhere. Check it out the store. Real. Peace Walker will be included in the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, along with Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater and the long-awaited Zone of the Enders HD Collection. Both Zone of the Enders classic titles in HD. Don't go back to the Dark Ages. You guys distracted me and I died. Thank you very much. Experience Transfer Ring. Brilliant. How did he know so much? Date. Ore wa Kojima Hideo Yakura! I love you, man. Is you. Why are you vacuuming? Wait, there's more. Really? So disappointed. Those HD collections on the PS4 look amazing, but I have an Xbox 360. I wish I could play. That's your one. Nice. You got Mega 64, but so is all that for real? Yeah, yeah, it's real. Transferring is my new lifestyle idea I created. But to explain the concept, I chose Mega 64. I just love their stuff. Uh, I mean, how was it? Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, but it leaves a lot of questions. So about how does this whole transferring thing work? Well, let's take a look here. Transferring is a word I created that I felt conveyed the concept very well. The core concept behind the transferring system is the ability to bridge distance and gaming hardware by transferring your game between platforms. Up until now, gamers' lives were divided into playing at home on a console or on a handheld when out. These styles were completely separated. Now with transferring, you'll be able to take the exact game you played on the console and put it on a handheld to continue playing on the go. Then when you get home, you transfer the game back to your home console. With transferring, you can play the exact same game 24 hours a day, whether at home or on the go. Wow, cool, yeah, it sounds great. I'm, I'm still just kind of trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. Well, in that case, let's go take a look at it in action. Oh, you've got it right here. Yeah, yeah, it's running, let's go take a look. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, 
Let me give you a lowdown on the transpar ring. This is the Peace Walker menu that everybody knows, but you'll see that there's a new icon added. When data goes from the PS3 out to the PSP, that's called transferring out. And when you import, that's called transferring in. Right now, I'm going to send data to Saya's PSP, so that'll be transferring out. Here's the transferring menu now. First, select your save data, and then use a USB cable to connect your PS3 to your PSP. Now, we can start transferring. Oops, a bit of a snag there, but the data is transferring. There we go. And bam, done. In 11 seconds. And that's all the time it takes to export your game. Oh, what's this transferring mark? Now that mark shows that the transfer data is locked. The data is locked to avoid accidental version conflicts that could occur if you overwrite your PS3 save data while your game is active on the PSP. So there we go. The data has been successfully transferred. So Saya, you said you had a business trip today? Right. Well, now you can continue your game on the bullet train or wherever you're heading off to. Great. So when I come back, what do I have to do? When you come back, all you gotta do is use transferring in to bring your data back to the PS3. All I gotta do is press OK, and in about 10 seconds, we reach 100% and our game is back on the PS3. Ah, uh, okay, so this is basically like that PSP remaster program they just announced. Okay, well first of all, these HD editions are not running on an emulator. They're being optimized and rebuilt specifically for PS3 and Xbox 360. So of course, the user interface, 2D art, and fonts along with a host of other elements, are all being enhanced and reworked into high resolution to look good in widescreen HD. The concepts are very similar at this point in time, but my ultimate objective for this system is quite different from what Sony is doing. Mm -hmm. And so then what is that uh, ultimate objective of yours? Okay. Well, what we saw earlier with Peace Walker is only step one. It's just the first phase of my plan for the transferring system. Uh, right now we're using transferring to transfer data between PSP and PS3 for Peace Walker. But in my mind, this really is nothing more than the very first step. The next step, step two, will bring PS2 class games to PS3 and NGP and allow transferring between those platforms. That's step two. However, my ultimate objective comes after that. Step 3 is to create all new PS3 class games that we use transferring between PS3 and NGP. So you'll be able to take advantage of transferring on day one when we release a new PS3 game. That's it. Okay, so all these games are transferring, going to be transferring enabled. That means we're going to see PS3 HD versions for all of them. That's right, that's right. Transferring only makes sense if you have a nice HD version to work with. Then with transferring, we can achieve that new gaming lifestyle I mentioned before. So, and then this is what you were talking about last year when you started mentioning this cloud era that you wanted to take the series into where Metal Gear players would be able to play each other anywhere, anytime. Is that right? Okay, so on to the HD collections. Uh, what can you tell us about those? Okay, well here we go right here, the Metal Gear Solid HD collection that everyone's been waiting for. The release will be in November 2011, and the collection comes with Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, and also Peace Walker in HD. It'll be out for both the 360 and PS3. As you can see, here's the transferring logo on the PS3 packaging, which means this version will support transferring. Very cool, very nice. but. Um... Talking about PS2 games, there's another game a lot of people are asking about. What about our boy, uh, Chihuti over here? Shall I put on some music? Yes, please do. Hi, Dara! Okay, and moving on. Yes, Mark. The Zoe series will also be released as an HD collection. It will include Zoe 1 and 2. It'll be out for the 360 and PS3 in 2012. The PS3 packaging has a transferring logo, so of course, it will be transferring enabled. 
And so Hideo, but the fact that you're not going to be at E3 doesn't mean that you won't have some games there, is that right? Right. I believe you're talking about this, right? This is Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. Our first title for this platform. Oh, and uh, is there a release date for that? Uh, yes, winter 2011. So you'll see it out this year. Uh, we're featuring the playable for this game on the show floor at both the Nintendo and Konami booth at this year's E3. So please, everyone, if you have the chance and you're in LA, check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's in 3D. Your head will be spinning. So I see some of this concept art behind us. You can see Raiden here and in some of the, uh, the uh, paintings behind us. So I have to ask, what about Metal Gear Solid Rising? Um, did you have plans to announce anything this E3 on that game? Well, I know it's a highly anticipated title, but we made the decision not to announce anything at this year's E3 show. So then I guess it's safe to assume it's not going to come out this year. There are a lot of rumors on the net right now, but we are targeting to release in 2012 as originally planned. And so then, but all of this art that we see behind us is all rising concept art, is that right? Yes, but just a very small sampling. Oh, hey, what's up, Yoji? Hi. Hi. Everybody, uh, art director Yoji Shinkawa. Yoji Shinkawa here. You are character and mecha designer on Rising, is that right? Yes. Up until now, I had mostly been drawing concept on my own. However, for this project, we set up a concept art gym. The designs are being created as a gym with the concepts for mechs characters and environment split between the members. So what can you tell us about the direction you're taking uh, the artwork for this game? Mm. It's, a, it's an extension of the concepts from MGS4, but uh, we wanted to take it in a more futuristic and sci-fi direction. Mm. That's the concept. And uh, there's a lot of art here. I see a lot of different stages and, and uh, enemies and things. Uh, how far into the process would you say that you guys are at this point? Our, our teamwork is mostly complete. However, we do have one more task that still remains. Wow, very cool. So while we have you here, do you have any message for the fans out there? Yes, I do. The Rising Project is striving for gameplay and direction that is a slight departure from the MGS series up until now and I hope everyone will look forward to it. Also, I'm currently working on something new and ever more intriguing, and I hope you will look forward to it as well. Thank you very much. Great, cool. Thank you very much. You. Yeah. Hideo, we've seen a lot of games here that you're involved in in some respect, um, producing on the Rising, the HD collections, all of that, but what about the next proper Hideo Kojima game, um, can you tell us something about it? You must be working on something, creating something new. <laughs> of course, I'm actually working on it right now. We're still in the planning phase. We're experimenting with some of the ideas we have, as well as researching, conducting interviews. From there, we take the necessary info we need and move forward. So when it comes to the title, the game system, or any kind of visuals, there's nothing I can really show you at this time. But you can't you got to give us something. You got to, the, the E3 promises today, oh, everything. What, it, this right here in the back of us, what, there's something right here. What is this? You got to give us something. Oh man, you saw it? Mm, I, okay, I can't say much about the title we're working on, but I can talk about this engine we're developing, the engine for my new game. It's displayed on the screen behind you. How about I talk a little about that? Well, this engine we call the Fox Engine. It's a Kojima Productions original engine. Up until now, we have been developing games exclusively for specific platforms. But in the future, we look to go more global. And we are paving the road to go multi-platform for future titles. Of course, the dev tools are included, 
so hopefully we can push out great games with shorter development time. Currently it looks like this. We started to create this engine shortly after we finished up MGS4 and continued to develop it alongside Peace Walker. We've made it this far and now it's time to utilize this tool for my upcoming unannounced game and of course brush it up while we use it. And in the future I hope to make this engine the best in the world. Our engine, Kojima Productions engine, this is the Fox engine. It's multi-platform, Mark. But uh, let's go with this one. Uh, so this is a game though, right? Right, right. This is a game. Our designers and artists are using the engine and its tools to work in assets at the time. Experimenting here and there. But it's not necessarily for my next game. They're just placing items in the stage for purpose of research. Well, so when do you think you'll be showing us uh, more about this? What, what more can you tell us about it? Well, I really, I really can't say much about when. But my next game, my next project to utilize this new engine will be a multi-platform game and will be transferring enabled for a global audience. Okay, so Hideo, before we go, is there any final message you'd like to give to all the people out there watching? Well, yes, I do. This year will be a year of preparations for Kojima Productions. I'm very sorry I wasn't able to make it to E3 this year. But this year, we have Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D for the Nintendo 3DS and the HD collection coming to Xbox 360 and the PS3 to look forward to. And in 2012, we have Rising and maybe others to represent the Kojima Productions brand. I plan on going to E3 next year, so until then, thank you for watching, and see you at E3 2012. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your time here today, and thank you all, all the fans out there for watching, and uh, until next E3, I guess. Yep. See you next year. <laughs> Bye-bye. お前は仲間を撃った。これで一人前の兵士だ。大丈夫。家には
トイレですよボスによろしくな10日前、パスの生存が確認され生きていたのかああカリブ海洋上を漂流中ベリーズの漁師に救助されたらしいそれで俺たちの情報が漏れるだからパスの口を封じろといやそうじゃない米国の非政府諜報機関サイファーはパスにダブルスパイの権利をかけたそのため彼女はキューバ南端の収容キャンプで尋問を受けているキューバの中のアメリカ法を逃れたブラックサイトマザーベース査察の件これと無関係とは思え国連の核査察おそらくパスのリークを裏付けるためだ俺たちは国家に帰属しない軍隊だこの軍事力が明るみに出る世界中が敵に回るだがパスを送り込んだサイファーという非政府諜報機関にとっても脅威だパスはサイファーの正体を知っているああ生きているならこちらに協力してもらいたいサイファーへの唯一の手がかりだ。キューバ本国との境界からヘリを呼ばす明日の昼にはマザーベースに戻れるその頃にはこっちの客も帰っているだろう
だが言葉政治が絡むすまないか増援は出せるああたまには一人がいざ予定通りだなスネークブランクがあるとは思えん。ターゲットのチコとパスは北東の旧施設だ基地内に入りまずは北東に向かってくれ Okay, sorry about that. Our mics were cut off. But yes, this is gameplay footage right now, what you're seeing here. It's all real world. This is open world. You can see so everything that you see in the distance. That's the base. And you can approach the base from any angle, anywhere you want. It's a completely open, real life type of simulation. ちょっとこう、いつからないように今すぐ見ますけど。で、今向こうに走行者が来てます。で、見つからないようにスネーク。で、今向こうに走行者が来てます。で、今向こうに走行者が来てます。で、今向こうに走行者が来てます。で、今
Here it comes. This American helicopter. And it can provide cover for you, fire for you if needed. Of course, if you pull it in somewhere where it gets spotted easily, it will get shot down, so you have to be careful. And now you hear Flight of the Valkyries here. Um, you can actually adjust this. You can choose whatever song you want on this. <laughs> but, but if you use a really loud song, that might make you get found, so you might want to be careful. Okay, so today, we're just going to take it to this point. Um, we got here, we're about to sneak in, but we didn't have much time, so we're just going to take the helicopter and leave. So you can use the helicopter to fly between different missions, go to other countries, things like that. And you see everything you see down there on the ground, you can actually go there. This is completely open. And there we have it. What'd you guys think? Congratulations. Fantastic. Please try to relax. There is plenty of time. I need to tell you something. You've been in a coma for quite some time. On your face, soldier, the whole place is coming down. V has come to. Don't you die on me, damn it! He be dropping! Intubate, now! Cardiac arrest, he's in VFib! <laughs> Spots. 
Hit him again! Not your kind of people. Clear! You see kind of phony. Everything's a lie. How's he doing? We are well, he's stabilized. But it took too long. People. He's in a coma. Something in your makeup. What about him? Yes, yes, I know. You would like to know how long. I'm afraid it's been... nine years. See this? Diamond Docks. Our new home.
way has come through. not working.
emergency stairs, come on. Please try to relax. There is plenty of time. I need to tell you something. Hey guys, it's Jeff Keeley up here in San Francisco for GDC Week. And as you've probably seen on the site, Metal Gear Solid 5 has officially been announced as the Phantom Pain. And uh, the man uh, behind it, uh, or at least we thought behind it, was uh, Mr. Mogren, the head CEO of Moby Dick Studios. And it's, it's, it's great to have you with us uh, here today, Mr. Mogren. Hi, Jeff. That's, it's great to see you again. It's only been a few weeks since we chatted. You look a little bit different, but uh, how was your flight over? Um, very tired. Yeah, it's a yeah. long flight yes. from Sweden. I, your uh, eyes, it seems like they don't move very much. Could you blink for me? Uh, yes, uh, wait a minute. Oh. Mr. Kojima, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> so here we are, Mr. Kojima, no more secrets. Uh, today you finally confirmed <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. The Phantom Pain uh, from Moby Dick Studio. You, you are though the game director, and, and you know this is great because we can finally now talk about this game. We can answer a lot of the questions that the fans have um, about this game. So I guess the first thing everyone is probably wondering is this whole Moby Dick Studio thing, Mr. Mogren. Uh, well, why did you decide to keep this such a secret about the fact that this was Metal Gear Solid Five? I know. There are several reasons for this. Uh, one is that I think horror fans, myself included in this, wanted to do something really interesting in the social space. You know, I think it's, it's been kind of dull lately and we wanted to do something to really energize the community. And the second reason for doing this is we wanted to evaluate the Fox engine. So we wanted to put the game out without revealing that it was Metal Gear Solid and just see how well it would do just on the, based on the visuals of the Fox engine. I think t two years ago when we yes. sat down at uh, Comic-Con in San mm. Diego and you if people ever wonder how far ahead you think about these things, you outlined this whole plan to me many years ago about how you were going you know, we were going to talk about Moby Dick and this long plan. So you've been thinking about this for a number of years about this, uh, th this strategy, right? Were you surprised how quickly people, at, like at the VGAs, how quickly the fans figured out that it was Metal Gear Solid V? So, you know, honestly, we knew that people were going to know what it was, more or less, but we were surprised that they were actually able to guess the exact title. Um, you know, we knew from the beginning that it wouldn't be a secret. We wanted fans to realize this. It was kind of a service to the fans saying that, hey, here's the inside joke. We know what you know what it is, but you know, just play along with it. And we're happy that fans did realize what it was and uh, did play along with it. And obviously, you know, I think people have been having a lot of fun online. Even that uh, interview I did with uh, the supposed Mr. Mogren a few weeks ago, all the fans were wondering, <laughs> is it real? Is it, is it, is it made with Fox Engine? Uh, and it, it was a real guy. We got, you know, he was, uh, who, that guy was just someone that you sort of hired to sort of pretend to be Mr. Mogren? Honestly, I wanted to be here in person, you know, wearing this mask and have an interview with you. But unfortunately, I was very busy preparing for this GDC presentation. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we found a, a Swedish guy to kind of stand in and do that interview. You go to great lengths to uh, protect the mystery around this game. So let's get into, you know, what the Phantom Pain is. I think that the, I was talking to a lot of fans on social media, as you said, mm -hmm. to ask them what, what they wanted me to talk to you about. And a lot of people, I think, are a little confused about... Um, you know, we showed uh, Ground Zeroes at uh, PAX last year, and there was the Phantom Pain at VGAs. Now you're saying this is Metal Gear Solid V, and we saw some new footage in this, but also footage of, uh, you know, from Ground Zeroes and from the VGAs. So how, how is, the Phantom Pain and Ground Zeroes, are they, are they different games, or is it all Metal Gear Solid V? How does that work? The Ground Zeroes is the... So to explain how these things fit together, Ground Zeroes is basically a prologue. 
And this takes place about nine years prior to Phantom Pain. So Phantom Pain takes place nine years after Ground Zeroes. But put together, these two pieces comprise Metal Gear Solid V. And the Phantom Pain is, you know, the main part of the game. And it, it's really a huge game. So when, uh, are, are they going to, like, you're going to buy Metal Gear Solid V and you'll get this all together? Or how does it, uh, how do you experience it? So we can't comment just yet on how these things will be distributed and sold. But what we can say is that, you know, Phantom Pain and Ground Zeroes will be two parts of a whole, and Ground Zeroes will come first. It'll kind of be Phantom Pain on a smaller scale. So it'll be open world, but not quite as big as Phantom Pain. So it'll allow the user to jump in, learn how to sneak you know, in real time in that world, that open world. And then later on, after they kind of get used to that, then Phantom Pain will come along, and they'll be thrown into this huge, gigantic open world. So um, it, it's a two-step process to game design, and together these things will comprise Metal Gear Solid Five. Now, a lot of speculation amongst the fans, kind of where this is set in the Metal Gear universe. Is it after Peace Walker? You know, is this uh, Snake? Is it Big Boss? What can you tell us about for you know the fans that want to understand how this fits into your grand Kojima vision of Metal Gear? Um, where is this story set? So Ground Zeroes takes place almost immediately after Peace Walker, and then the main part of the game, Phantom Pain, takes place nine years later. Another thing the fans were wondering about is David Hayter, because um, mm. he said on Twitter earlier today that he wasn't even asked to come back as mm. the, the voice, um, so there's going to be a new actor mm. playing Snake or Big Boss? So I can say that yes, it will be a new person, I can't say who just yet. But David, it was interesting, he said I wasn't even asked, why did you not bring him back for, for this one? What we're trying to accomplish here is re recreate the Metal Gear series. It's, it's a new type of Metal Gear game, mm -hmm. and we wanted to have this reflected in the voice actor as well. Yeah. Um, now, as we go through the trailer, there's an interesting moment at the beginning where you see what seems like three people on the, uh, the bed, because it feels like you're seeing from someone's perspective, and then at the end there's a line, well, what about him? And you cut out. Who, who is that, that third character that we're seeing from his perspective at the beginning? Is that, that a new character or someone that we know from the Metal Gear universe? That's actually me. That's Hideo Kojima. So, you know, in a way, I'm a phantom as well. You know, and I'm looking at Snake and Kaz, and um, as an old game designer, I'm looking at my, at my creations, and they're wondering, hey, are you dead? But you know, I'm still there. Now, as we go through the trailer, there's so many amazing moments. There's the, the horseback riding we see with a familiar character in there. Um, I mean, tons of, of open world action, it feels like. It's, it's such an ambitious game. There's this group, the, the Diamond Dogs. What can you tell us about them? There's been lots of rumors, like, does that have to deal with Blood Diamonds or where the game is set? Um, that's a new, a new group, right, for Metal Gear? You know, there are many different meanings uh, behind this name. You know, I think you touched on a few of them. And of course, there's also the David Bowie album as well. Um, you know, but really, uh, this is the name of his new unit you know uh, he loses his old unit he has to find a, create a new one this is the name um, you know the name signifies many things you know a, a dog you know the diamond dogs so it's like a dog of war you know they work for money and do many dirty things but at the same time they have pride you know and that's where the diamonds come in you know they they fight and they fight for money maybe but they have their pride looks like uh snake's got his horn out of his hat uh, he actually has some debris embedded into his skull debris and bone as well Oh, okay, interesting. So that will be, and he's also got, you know, it seems like he has that sort of cyborg-like arm there. Is that something that then, as you play the game, you'll, will you have sort of abilities with that arm then? Uh, so sort of there will be different ways that, you know, depending on the player, they may be able to do different things with that arm. Well, it's not going to be anything quite like Bionic Commando or anything <laughs> <Exactly>. like that. <laughs> Are there going to be new characters that we will meet in this game? We obviously saw some hints of some of the familiar characters in the universe, but are you, uh, you and Shinkawa, are you designing new characters we will meet as well? Yes, of course. There will be many new characters. Um, I think fans can expect to see some familiar faces as well, returning from the old saga. But, you know, Yoji Shinkawa has been working on some new characters as well, and I think, you know, it, it's a different taste from what he's done in the past, so I think fans have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> The Metal Gear series has always been known for, you know, great stealth and then it's kind of blended more into action. If you were to describe Metal Gear Solid Five, I mean, what is the, it feels like it's open world, I mean, it's, it's epic, I mean, we see the horseback riding, we see, you know, vehicles, I mean, so much happening. What's the style of, of the gameplay that you really, really want? Because if it's a reboot of the series, it may, it may feel different, too. You know, Metal Gear Solid has always been based around this concept of sneaking and infiltration. But up to now, it's very much been kind of like a, you know, a story on rails. You know, you, you sneak in, but you're kind of limited in what you could do. This time, what we want to do is create a real open world and a realistic infiltration. So, you know, you don't just suddenly show up at the stage and sneak in. You figure out when you're going to go to the place and sneak in. You figure out how you're going to get there. 
you know, maybe you don't go there right away. Maybe you sidetrack and do a side mission along the way. Um, and if you do that, maybe the strategy to, strategy will change when you finally get to your final objective. So you know, it's more of a realistic approach to infiltration, and there are many options available to the player. Available to the player, you know, it's not something that's very uh, limited to a certain design. You know, it's a completely free design and very realistic. So as an example, say the player has to sneak into a certain area and help a certain person, uh, you know, and they show up at night. It may be dark and they have a hard time seeing anything. Um, so they maybe want to use jeeps, you know, jeeps headlights to see. But if they do that, they'll probably be found. So maybe they try to use a flashlight and sneak in. Um, there's still a chance that, may, that they may be found. But, you know, the guards will probably be less, uh, there'll be less guards than if you went in during the day. On the other hand, if you went during the day, uh, it may be easier to navigate. You can see what you're doing much more clearly. But of course, the guards will be, there'll be more guards there and it'll be much easier for you to get found. So, you know, really it's up to the player to decide what's the best strategy to infiltrate a certain area. So, you know, as we showed in the Fox presentation, the Fox Engine presentation, you know, time passes within the game in real time. There's a 24 hour time cycle. So, you know, it's up to the player to decide at what time they decide to, you know, embark on their mission. You know, Fox Engine, how do you, how do you think it's going to change the way you're designing Metal Gear Solid V? Because obviously, you know, you're known always for kind of pushing the visuals, but it feels like now you have better tools to sort of design, and you know, this sounds like a incredibly ambitious game, so that's going to help, I would imagine. One thing I want to make clear is, you know, just graphics. That was not, you know, our goal in creating the Fox engine. You know, what we wanted to change the entire way that we create a game. You know, up until Metal Gear Solid 4, I guess, you know, we approached game creation sort of as craftsmen, and we, you know, worked on every single little detail by hand and, you know, put a lot of detail to everything. Um, and while that's great, you know, we want to use technology to our advantage and, you know, make things easier to create a game. And so the Fox engine was designed to work more efficiently and uh, give us this boost of technology in game design. You know, we want to really shift, you know, the amount of time spent creating the game from creating assets to actually doing the game design. So, you, know, you know, in the past, maybe, uh, you know, a programmer would spend a lot of time creating a certain system or asset, but now a level designer can go in there and create a stage on their own. They can create the stage, they can do the lighting, and, uh, you know, pretty much create a stage by themselves. So really, the time goes from asset creation and programming to actual game design and allows us to focus more on the game design. Now one thing someone asked me on Twitter which I thought was interesting was you have Metal Gear Solid 5 and it's it's not a 5, it's a V. Oh. And at the end you have that line, V has come too. <laughs> so why did you change from numbers to Roman numerals? Uh, you know, up until MGS 1 through 4, of course, we used, you know, regular Arabic numerals. But, you know, since then, you know, the West has really caught up. And I think, you know, in many ways, you know, we're threatened by games from the West. Um, you know, and there's a lot of competition out there. So we really want to reinvent ourselves with this game, reinvent the series. And so shifting over from 5 to V represents our will for victory. You know, V stands for victory. And this is what we want to accomplish with this game, is kind of take back, you know, our leadership and, and strive for victory. So that's why we shifted from Arabic numerals to this Roman V. But what do you, like, you always have a theme to your games, or, you know, you, you have a message that you want to put in the games. For Metal Gear Solid V, I mean, what is, what is this story about? I and mean, we talk about phantom pains, we talk about comas, and, you know, getting older. Uh, but what, is, what do you think this game, when you first said, I want to make Metal Gear Solid V, what did you want to make this game about? Well, I do have a concept and a theme in mind for Metal Gear Solid V. From the beginning, I've had this in my mind, but I can't say it. I can't reveal that just yet. What I can say is that, you know, Metal Gear has always been about, you know, these themes of anti-war, you know, anti-nuke. It it's always had these messages, and it's always about what to pass on to the next generation. You know, Metal Gear Solid 1 was about genes, 2 was about memes, 3 was scenes, 4 was sense, and Peace Walker was peace. So, of course, you know, Metal Gear Solid 5 does have a key concept as well, but I can't reveal it just yet. I can say that it's a very heavy theme. Playing the entire game as one character? Yes, you'll be playing as one character. No right. You can play Revengeance for that. What we see, you know, with him waking up in that trailer, is that, is that the start of the Phantom Pain? Yeah. That is correct. You wake up, and, uh, you know, you, you're a snake waking up, and then that's how you enter Nugger Solid Five. this really big open world. Now, there are all these hallucinations, and, you know, people love that the VGA is this, uh, you know, the whale that sort of came out. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that introduces, I think, a lot of interesting possibilities for you with the supernatural or sort of fantastical um, and Metal Gear is, you know, a game that has always, it's been rooted in kind of real military mm. technology and, you know, there's obviously been, uh -huh. you've had some fun with it, but it's been very realistic. How are you planning to blend sort of the realism of Metal Gear with some of these more supernatural mm. elements? There, of course, will be a balance between things that are very real and, and a little bit of supernatural elements as well. Um, but it will be primarily real. 
You know, it, it's real. You know, primarily a real game. Um, but that said, you know, it does take place. You know, nine years later, and roughly around 1984, that era. So you know, there are influences from that era within this game. Um, if I were to give, you know percentage for the balance, I'd say maybe 80% real, and then the other 20% maybe sci-fi with a little bit of supernatural elements. Will that then change up the gameplay, because it allows you to do things with, you know, dreams and supernatural abilities and hallucinations that can change up the style of gameplay? So cool. Probably not. So is Moby Dick Studio, is that going to still exist now, or is it sort of going to become now Kojima Productions? Well, I wouldn't say they cease to exist because Moby Dick Studio is Kojima Productions, so oh, we're still around. You know, honestly, I really would have liked to have a studio in Sweden because it's a really <laughs> nice place. But as of right now, we're developing this in Tokyo and in Los Angeles. Well, you're hiring people in Los Angeles, and obviously they're going to be part of the team. And this game, you know, is it sounds so ambitious uh, that you guys are. I mean, it's, it's, it must be the biggest Metal Gear you've ever made, right? You know, it's not necessarily that. You know, I, I do want the LA Studio to have their own things to work on as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that we'll be working on the same exact thing. And so, you know, in the beginning, I think, you know, as the Los Angeles studio gets up to speed with Fox Engine, I think we'll be working together on many different things. Um, there will be a collaborative effort there. But my ultimate goal, my ultimate vision is that, you know, the Tokyo team and the Los Angeles team will be working on different things and kind of growing together and competing with each other in many ways. Um, so, you know, in a sense, Kojima Productions will no longer be just a Tokyo studio. It'll exist somewhere in between, you know, Tokyo and Los Angeles. It'll be the culmination of these two oh, studios. How much has the game changed from when you first thought of it to today? And I mean, are you, you happy with sort of your overall design for it? Or how, how far are you into kind of designing the entire game out? Uh, as far as how much it's changed, honestly, it has not changed very much from my concept at all. It, of course, you know, within the team, there were some people who opposed taking Metal Gear Solid and making it into an open world game. But I think now we're all on the same page and we're all moving full speed ahead you know, towards the same goal. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but a lot of the fans have been wondering uh, you know, PlayStation 4 got announced, and you, you sh you're showing all this footage, and people are like, this looks much better than anything I can play right now on my Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. Um, are you going to make this game for the, the new systems that have been announced, like PlayStation 4? I can't comment on any next-gen platforms, but what I can say, as we you know, revealed earlier today, this will be available on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And right now, of course, you know, we're developing it within a PC environment. So you think what we saw today, that trailer, you think people will be able to play that on their Xbox or PlayStation? It's going to look like that? What you've seen today is, of course, you know, uh, moving on a PC. But, you know, it's being targeted at current-gen consoles. So, you know, I can't say that it'll be 100% exactly what you've seen today, but it will be very close to what you've seen. It's clear that there's a lot going on in your head about what Metal Gear Solid V is going to, to be like from a, uh, a story perspective. So this is your last one, right? You know, I want this to be my last one. Of course, I always say that, um, but this time I really want it to be true. <laughs> um, you know, after this, I really want the Tokyo team and the LA team to focus on their own, take over Metal Gear and, you know, create new games in the series while I'm freed up to work on my own projects. And, you know, for about 10 years, I have all these ideas in my head that I want to create. So hopefully I'll be able to work on that. All right, well, we'll leave it there then, Mr. Kojima. It's been uh, fun to see the game. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, anything else to say to the uh, the fans at home uh, who uh, saw everything today? Anything you want to say to them? Phantom Pain got Metal Gear Solid 5. You know, we've announced now that Phantom Pain is Metal Gear Solid 5, and it's running on the Fox engine. I will say that you know it's, it's going to be a very different experience from Metal Gear Solid games up to this point and it's maybe not quite the traditional stealth experience that people have come to expect from the series, but it's a lot of fun, and it's something different. It's, it's what I want to create, and I hope people look forward to it. It's getting to the point where it's becoming a lot of fun. I want to show it to people as soon as I can. It's not quite ready yet, but please just wait a little longer. V has come to V for the victory. This time, with Metal Gear Solid V, the themes are a little different from previous games in the series. We're taking on some very heavy subjects, such as race and revenge. This makes the tone much darker. As a result, I wanted Snake to have a more subdued performance, expressed through subtle facial movements and tone of voice rather than words. Furthermore, the game takes place in 1984, when Snake is 49 years old. 
Therefore, we needed someone who could genuinely convey both the facial and vocal qualities of a man in his late 40s. It's different from anything we've done before. So I asked a producer friend of mine in Hollywood, Avi Arad, for advice. He's the one who introduced me to Mr. Kiefer Sutherland. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? So we were at dinner in Japan celebrating the 25th anniversary of Metal Gear Solid. And we started talking about actors. And I said to him, why don't you go for Kiefer Sutherland? Whenever I think of Snake, uh, I think of a certain voice delivery. And Kiefer has this fantastic, rich uh, voice that maintains uh, a, a level of mystery to it. It's an honor to be able to play this character. This character has an unbelievable legacy, that there's a real personal quality to the character that I've connected to. I felt that he was the perfect fit in terms of age and performance. So, we made him an offer. I'm not a gamer, and I even knew about this game. I was certainly keenly aware of the legacy of these games, the unbelievable success of these games. Kiefer immediately understood what I was looking for. I was very moved by his commitment to the project. Well, I've never done the facial capture before where they stick all the metal dots on your face. Everything from a smile that's like, like that, or one of them is a monkey face, which is the most embarrassing to do, which is like, like that. And it's so that they can catch every line that changes in your face. The face of the character in the video game is doing exactly what I'm doing while I'm reading the script. That's impressive. In previous Metal Gears, Snake's emotions were expressed through phrases like, Kaz, are you okay? But this time, all he says is, Kaz? I wanted everything else to be expressed to the player through Snake's facial expression and vocal performance. Thanks to the top-notch acting, it's been a great success. I think it will turn out to be something truly special. A friend of mine used to be Snake, uh, but Kiefer is, uh, is a class by, him, by himself. Trying to isolate what does Snake want for the future? And how does the past weigh on him? There is a character's hope for a future. And that rounds out what I term as the human experience. Uh, it's what I've always loved about movies. Uh, it's not something I've experienced as a character in a video game before. As technology improves and game hardware continues evolving to adapt to these changes, we developed a new game engine called the Fox Engine. It's one step closer to creating photorealistic experiences within the context of a game. Meeting that challenge required that we shift from creating characters by hand to capturing real-life actors in 3D. By using their physical likeness along with their voice, facial expressions, and movements, we can create believable, photorealistic characters whose performances are closer to what you'd expect from live-action movies as opposed to traditional video games. That's one of the first goals I set for this game. This role differs from any other video game that I've done. And then also the technology has changed so vastly um, from the other games I've done. And, and the other games are not that old. Technically starting to cross a line uh, with what they're capable of doing and what these guys have done. It's exciting to be a part of it. We want to try to see just how far we could go in creating a truly believable, living, breathing incarnation of Snake. To the people that made the game, thank you for having me. This has been an unbelievable experience, and I hope the gamers enjoy the game as much as I have enjoyed making it. Kojima-san was able to capture a biblical proportion story. The system has been changed to embrace an open-world game design. It's different from previous stealth games and results in a more tension-packed experience. This new style of gameplay, along with the new creative process and realistic characters, will add more depth than ever before to the storytelling and atmosphere. Please look forward to the final product. We pull in money, recruits, just to combat cycle. Rubbing our noses in bloody battlefield dirt. All for revenge.
we still here? Just to suffer? Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost. The comrades I've lost won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm gonna make them give back our past. It's not just them. The whole world wants you dead. You'll have to join up with Miller. Build that private army of yours one more time. First, we need to save Miller. He's in Afghanistan. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. That's how Kaas would want it. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well, that's up to you. Now go! And let the legend come back to life.
get you out. Snake. What took you so long? wet work and we answer no greater good no just cause something interesting. Cypher is pursuing new research. He claims that what they're doing in Africa is the missing piece. A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <laughs> 